Hey guys, welcome to Fantasy Tip. A tired and excited Max with you for the weekend ads video this week. Tired of the outs, the IRs that we've had in the past couple of weeks, but excited about the trophies we're about to add to the collection. Now, if you're here watching this video right now, you're either fighting for gold or bronze or for a chance at number one next week. As for myself, I'm in the third place battle and I'm also in the final of the Content Creators League, which I'm aiming to win. I've done my homework for this week, so without further ado, let's go check out the best available options under 70% rostered for this weekend. For Friday and Saturday, we have two teams only, the Edmonton Oilers and the Philadelphia Flyers. At number one, Owen Tippett. Not his first time here, great shot volume, goal scorer. If he feels like it, he can lay the body down. Definitely the highest floor between the two teams. You might think I'm crazy for ranking Ekholm this high if you haven't paid attention recently, but he's one of the main reasons why I'm in the final of the CCL. Absolute stud, great floor, and he's found his offensive touch in the last few weeks since he ranked 17th in fantasy in the last two weeks. At number three, Evander Kane, not a lot of offensive production lately, but an amazing floor with shots and hits. Morgan Frost is being trusted more. He has 10 points in the last 11 games. Talk about a breakout year. Tyson Forster, line one, PP1 in Philadelphia. He's up to 20 goals in 71 games. Not bad for a rookie going under the radar. Adam Enrique at number six, he was the perfect addition for Edmonton. They finally got their third line center for the playoffs. Although right now he's playing on the line with Leon Dreisaitl. He's got four goals in the last eight games. Jamie Drysdale got an assist, four shots, two blocks in his lone game back. He also has PP1 duties. At number eight, Scott Lawton, Swift Knife King. He is the gatekeeper of this list. He's so trustworthy with the peripherals and could have an even bigger role if Couturier ain't back by the weekend. Garnet Hathaway, hit machine, 15 points this season with three of them coming off the shorthanded. At number 10, Warren Fuego, not huge on this guy, but you can't ignore the fact that he plays with Dreisaitl and Enrique and he can pop off at any time. If back in healthy, this is where I would play Sean Couturier. Before crashing into the boards, he was on the first line last Saturday. Joel Farabee is tied second on the Flyers for points all season with 49 and 76, but he's been really cold and only plays third line minutes right now. He also lost his PP1 spot, which is why I have him all the way down here. I think he's a fade unless you're in a deep league. Uh, believe it or not, Connor Brown has two goals, two assists, four points in the last six games. And finally, Sam Carrick, three assists in the last five games played. He has decent hits and wins face-offs for Cats Leagues. Now let's jump into the fun sections. For Friday and Sunday, we have eight teams in action. The Anaheim Ducks, the Arizona Coyotes, the Buffalo Sabres, the Carolina Hurricanes, Colorado Avalanche, Detroit Red Wings, New York Rangers, and the Washington Capitals. At number one, Patrick Kane. When you're in the playoff or finals, you want showtime on your team. Five goals, six assists, 11 points in the last 10 games. At number two, couple of caps. Strom and Wilson have really nice schedules. They play Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. Strom is the PP1 center. He's got 11 points in the last eight games. And Wilson will make his comeback Thursday. And with Washington fighting for a playoff spot, I see Wilson coming out really strong with a couple of points and a bunch of hits. At number three, Nick Schmaltz. Arizona's forwards have been fantasy relevant lately. Schmaltz has eight points over his last six games, and he is always a threat on the power play. At number four, Jonathan Drouin, top line with McKinnon and Rantanen, PP1 as well. He's averaging the most time on ice he's ever had. Great option for the weekend. JJ Pedrka, seven goals, one assist, eight points in the last six games. Phenomenal numbers, even without the peripherals. It helps when you play top line with Tage Thompson and Alex Tuck. Still a little sketchy, but the numbers are there. At number six, Casey Middlestat, who's got points in seven of the last 10 games. He has a big boost in value since he is the PP1 center with all the firepower around him in Colorado. We also have Nick Bugstad, big top line center in Arizona, 
four-game goal streak, six-game point streak, and has points in 10 of the last 12 games. Alexis Lafreniere, great shot volume and plays with confidence. He got a five-point night last Saturday and is living up to his potential right now. At number nine, a couple of Yotes. Cooley has seven points in the last six, where Dylan Gunter has four, but Gunter plays on the PP1. It depends if you have room at center or on the wing. Archery Lekkonen at 10, with Nishishkin out. Lekkonen has more responsibility and has points in the last two games. Couple of Red Wings on the second line. Comfer, four assists in the last four games. Raymond has been a little more cold in the last two weeks, but can pop off at any time. Jordan Stahl at 12, big boost in value in my book since he took over Kuzi's spot on the second line and he is playing with Sveshnikov and Teravainen. Speaking of cold, we got Dylan Cousins who only has one assist in the last seven games. I don't think it helps that he plays with cold rookie Zach Benson and Jack Quinn who hasn't played all year and doesn't look too good right now. Connor McMichael, top line center in Washington, three game pointless streak. But prior to that, he had five goals, three assists, eight points in his last eight games. What a career start for Josh Doan. Two goals, three assists, five points in his first three NHL games. He still shouldn't be trusted in 10-man leagues and less because no power play and third-line minutes. Max Pacioretty at 16, second line with Dylan Strom, also plays PP1. He's become an Apple merchant with only three goals and 20 points in 39 games, though. Ivan Miroshnyshenko already praised him in past videos. Great floor with all the surprising hits he's given us. I'd rate him a bit higher than a boomer bust, and I expect good things from him. Kyrvo Teravainen, boomer bust. Hendrix Lapierre, PP1 in Washington, but we'll see if he's the odd man out when Wilson returns. At 20, Jack Roslovic. Not much result since getting to New York, but he still plays with Zibanejad and... Chris Kreider, that's always dangerous. And finally, couple of duck swingers, Alex Killor and Troy Terry. Anaheim is a total dumpster fire. Killor and Terry are the only ones I touch with a stick. As for Saturday and Sunday, we have 10 teams in action. Chicago Blackhawks, Columbus Blue Jackets, the Dallas Stars, Minnesota Wild, Montreal Canadiens, Nashville Predators, New Jersey Devils, Ottawa Senators, San Jose Sharks, and the St. Louis Blues. All right, the Blues have by far the best schedule in the NHL this weekend. They play the struggling Ducks and the San Jose Sharks. Bushnevich is my number one. I think the Blues have the potential to score 10 to 13 goals in both games on the weekend. You never know. At number two, Gustav Nyquist. Hats off to everyone who acquired him and kept him until the final eight game, 12 point streak right now. Jake Neighbors, another Blues, top line, top power play, easy pickup right here. Ryan O'Reilly centering the first line and PP1 in Nashville is always a good stream. At number five, we have Mikael Granlund. I know he plays for the Sharks and they're terrible, but guess what? I added someone else on Monday and I already deeply regret it. Granlund has been so nice to watch and plays his heart out even on a struggling team. 11 points in his last 10 games. That's super impressive. Singe and Duchesne, couple of star second liners who can both go absolutely crazy, but they can both go dry. Kind of at your own risk, but they remain quality players. Braden Shen, Brandon Sad, like we said earlier, the Blues have a fire schedule. Shen has the safer floor. Sad has been on fire recently. At number eight, Philip Kurashev. Why is he still under 10% rostered? What a joke. I won't even elaborate on him. Do yourself a favor and go look at his game log. At number nine, Uri Slavkovsky, first line PP1 option for the Canadians. Wyatt Johnston is a little further down the list, even though he's been doing amazing, because he's on the third line and Dallas plays Colorado on the back end of a back to back. And in Chicago, where Mrazek doesn't give a lot of goals like you would think. Maybe I should rank him higher, but I'm a little skeptical. Call it a gut feeling. Shane Pinto has been up and down lately, lost his PP1 spot, but still operates as the first line center. Couple of Blue Jackets, Godro is the magician, Marchenko is the finisher, they both play PP1. Alex Newhook is great for deeper leagues. Second line center who plays PP1 and at 2% rostered, don't be shy. 
Jason Zucker, four points last four games. Great shot volume, occasional hits. Nick Foligno, PP1 in Chicago, second line winger with an awesome floor. We have a couple of Sharks, Zetterlund and Eklund. Eklund has six points in the last six. Zetterlund has eight in the last ten. Do not grab them if your league has plus minus. They still play for San Jose. Alex Nylander at 17, top line winger in Columbus, top power play, high risk, high reward. Don't ever forget that he's Williams' little brother, and they used to say that he had more talent. Mathieu Joseph at 18, second line with Claude Giroux and Tim Stutzel. The problem? No power play. Eric Kahlo at 19, his greatest attribute is that he plays with Jack Hughes, fantasy-wise. Uh, at 20, we have Marco Rossi. He's going to be a great player one day when he's able to find consistency. Right now, he's another boomer bust candidate. And finally, Joel Armia. Three goals, one assist, four points in the last four games. Not bad for a 0% rostered player. Now on to defensemen. Of course, Jacob Truba, one of my favorite defensemen in the league at number one. 67% rostered due to his injury or else he'd be 85% plus. The Connor McDavid of peripherals. At number two, Zach Wierenski, PP1D in Columbus. Eight points in the last seven games. I knew he'd be a league winner. I own him in three of my four leagues. Go ahead, don't be shy to scoop him. Seth Jones at number three, PP1D in Chicago, just like Wierenski, doesn't matter that they play on a bad team. These guys get the job done. At number four, Tori Krug, who gets a boost solely because they're getting terrible teams, and he's the PP1D in St. Louis. The Ghost at number five, PP1D in Detroit, that ranks in the top 10, nearing 50 points on the season. We also have Travis Sanheim, Cam York, with the addition of Drysdale. Uh, Sanheim and York both lost their place on the power play. That doesn't mean that they're not fantasy relevant. Great floors and career years for both of them. Jake Sanderson needs to work on his offensive consistency. He's a bit cold lately, still the PP1D in Ottawa. Sean Dursey, PP1D in Arizona, four points in the last eight games. Brock Faber lost his PP1 spot to this random 0% rostered player that's completely inefficient. He still plays amazing minutes and has three points in the last four games. Falk and Pareko here, another reminder that St. Louis is playing San Jose and Anaheim. At 11, Caden Gooley, who has points in five of his last six games on top of his amazing peripherals. He's got a four-game point streak without any power play time. Martin Fairvary. Phenomenal hits, great blocking here, nasty good in Cats Leagues. Thomas Harley, first pairing with Heiskanen and PP2 option in Dallas. 15 goals, 40 points on the season, but most of those came when Heiskanen was out. Jeremy Lozon, the new hit king of the NHL, is back from injury. Even if he doesn't produce on the score sheet, his hits give you amazing residual points. From here on out, we're fishing. Couple of Sabres defensemen, Byram and Power. Uh, inconsistent, high risk, high reward here. Cam Fowler, speaking of high risk, high reward, PP1D in Anaheim. Ryan McDonough plays insane minutes and is a great blocker, PP2 option. Keandre Miller got his D partner in Truba back. No power play for Miller, unfortunately. Simon Nemec, PP2 rookie in New Jersey. And a couple of reaches here. Kalen Addison, Rasmus Sandin. Addison is PP1 in San Jose. Sandin is PP2 in Washington. Heavy boomer busts only for deeper leagues. Now let's take a look at the Sunday goalies. We already know that Frederick Anderson will be in nets on Sunday if logic follows. And what a great matchup for Freddie against Columbus. Joel Ofer, Bennington, just look at the Ducks and Sharks game logs. Elite goalie stream right here in St. Louis. At number three, we have Jonathan Quick, who should get the easier matchup with Montreal, unless coach wants to give Shesty a morale boost. At four, we have Marc-Andre Fleury or Gustafsson, kind of unsure who starts here, but Chicago is definitely not a terrifying matchup. Washington at home fighting for a playoff spot. Lindgren or Kemper against Ottawa. Can't guarantee a low-scoring game, but I'd put my hand in the fire that the Caps come out on top. Vejmelka or Ingram at San Jose. Two bad teams playing each other. Ride the less chaotic team and more structured team. Jake Allen has given up 16 goals in his last four games and will need to be solid if he wants to keep his number one job intact. Nashville ain't no pushovers. 
Alex Lyon against Buffalo. Detroit at home should take it, but this has the making of an offensive festival. At your own risk. Kakanen or Blackwood against Arizona. Sharks are terrible, but they still win once in a while. And here's a not-so-bad opportunity, honestly. 6K or Devin Levi, Detroit fighting for a playoff spot, should come out guns blazing, which makes me adamant about Buffalo goalies Sunday. But they're still in an okay spot. Now let's jump into the categories for this weekend. As for the shots, we have Josh Dome, small sample size, but four shots a game. Owen Tippett, 3.7. Patrick Kane and Zach Wierenski at 3. Evander Kane, 2.9. Shane Pinto, 2.8. JJ Pedrka, 2.7. Neil Ander, 2.6, Alex, and Dylan Genter, 2.5. For the blocks, Jacob Truba, 2.8, Chris Tanev, 2.8, Pareko and Gouli, 2.6, Mario Ferraro, 2.5, Jake Wallman and Jonas Brodin, 2.4. For the hits, Lozon at 4.9, Pizzetta, 4.1, Garnet Hathaway at 4, Sammy Blais and Kiefer Sherwood at 3.5, Shen and Kane at 3.3, Jared Tenordi at 3.2 and Cal Burrows at 3.2. Four faceoffs now Ryan O'Reilly 10.1, Jordan Stahl at 10, Dylan Strom 8.2, Nico Sturm and Nick Bukestad 8.1, Nick Dowd 7.8, Sisson 7.7, Jason Dickinson 7.6, and Mikael Granlund 7.1. And that's it for today, guys. Thank you for watching. Good luck this weekend. I hope you don't need it. If you're in a first place battle, do me a favor, go get the gold. If you're fighting for third place, don't give up, go get the bronze. Guys, try not to get the silver, that one stings a bit more. Thank you for watching me all year. If you like the content, click the like button, subscribe to our channel. It's always a pleasure and I will see you guys soon.